Okay, we're back live here. Um, this is that homework problem, and uh, you'll find when you're solving problems involving capacitors in circuits that there are three times that we can talk about without using calculus, okay? Without using fancy mathematics, there are three times that we can um, say something about the circuit. Um, and so a lot of times these problems have an A, B, and a C. This particular problem just has an A and a B. We're only going to look at two of those times. But the next problem, the next sample problem we look at, uh, will have all three. Now, um, what is happening here? Just stay where I want you. Freeze. Okay. There we go. Now, those times that we are able to talk about, the first time, part A, is right after the switch is closed. Because it takes time to charge up a capacitor, that means the change in voltage across the capacitor, which is just the charge divided by C, is going to be zero. And that means that the capacitor acts like a wire, okay? So uh, let's look at, at this circuit here. If the capacitor is acting like a wire, I can redraw that circuit. Okay, uh, there's the wire right here. And this is bulb A, B, C, and D. Okay? Now, you know that A is an indicator bulb for that battery, so all of the current is going to flow through that bulb A. And then it comes to this junction and splits but not 50-50 because it sees an easy path and a hard path. So more than half is going to go the easy way. Less than half is going to go the hard way. So let's go and do your homework for you here. What is the voltage difference across the capacitor? Well, the voltage difference across the capacitor... You're still uh, unfrozen. I'm sorry? You're frozen on the screen. Ah, okay. So... Zoom in. Oh, for crying out loud. What is wrong with this thing? So, the voltage difference across the capacitor is Q over C, but that's going to be zero. So it acts like a wire. And that means that bulb B is going to be brighter than bulb C because current favors the path of least resistance. Okay? These are pretty easy. If you understand circuits, you understand circuits with capacitors if you just put in a few little extra ideas. Now, the second time that we can talk about is a long time after the switch is closed. 
So that means the capacitor is full. There's no more room in that capacitor in this particular circuit. It's reached the, the largest voltage it can in this circuit. Now, that means the capacitor acts like an open switch. So let me redraw that circuit. with an open switch, okay? And remember this is bulb A and B and C and D. Now if that's an open switch, that means that all the current that goes through A has to go through C and then through D and back around. That means that A, C, and D are now in series with each other and that means that they're all equally bright. And uh, that means they each have to, if this is a 12 volt battery, they have to have four volts, four volts, and four volts. Now B is dark. It's on an incomplete path with no current flowing along it, so that's gonna be zero volts, which means I have to have eight volts across the capacitor. So if I go back to the homework, um, bulb B is now dimmer than bulb C. B is out. Quick little aside, B is out. Is B shorted out? Mm, no or heck no. It's heck no. B is on an incomplete path. Just because a bulb is out does not mean it's shorted out. In order to short out a bulb, you've got to put a wire from one side of the bulb to the other. Now, is that just semantics? No. If, if there's a short in your house, your house burns down if you don't have those, uh, those fuses in your fuse box. But if your bulb is on an incomplete path, it just doesn't light. Now what is the voltage difference across bulb A? Well, the voltage difference across bulb A we said was four volts, and that's the voltage of A is equal to the voltage of C is equal to the voltage across D. And when I say voltage, what I really mean is the change in voltage from one side to the other. And those are all equal to 4 volts. Bulb B is out. It's dark. And the capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the voltage across C plus the voltage across D which is 8 volts. Okay. Now the last part of this problem asks us to find the, the charge stored on the capacitor. Well, we can rewrite that definition of capacitance to look like this. Okay. The capacitance is just how much charge you can store for a one volt rise in voltage, and then you multiply that by how many volts you actually uh, increase the voltage. So in this case, the capacitance is given as 0.5 coulombs. I, no, farads. Volt, uh, capacitance is in farads. But, and then the voltage is going to be eight volts. But this is what I was trying to say, and I didn't do it very well. A farad is just a fancy way of honoring Michael Faraday, but what we really mean is coulombs per volt. 
And if I multiply that by 8 volts, the volts cancel out, and I'm left with 4 coulombs. Okay. Talk to your neighbor. See if your neighbor got that homework problem right.